Hello. Have you ever been going about your day and then all of a sudden, bam, Mother Sophia says, stop, wait a minute. I don't care what you're doing. We need a collective card reading done now. No? Well, that just happened to me. So you get me completely natural, no makeup, hair in a ponytail. And I'm going to get this reading done for you. It's apparently very vital that I get it done right now. So let me get the card set up and I'll be right back. Okay, so we have the Lightworker Oracle deck, Beyond Lemuria Oracle deck, Keeper of the Light Oracle deck, Angels and Ancestors Oracle deck, Energy Oracle deck. Yeah, five decks. Whatever Mother Sophia wants, Mother Sophia gets. So this will probably be a bit of a longer reading. Mine are typically about 30 minutes or so. So we'll just see where the energies take us. And we're going to start with the Lightworker Oracle. Remove all negative energy from this deck. All of my decks were just cleansed and recharged, cleared and rested. It's almost as if I knew. <laughs> That's an inside joke for all you intuitive folks out there. Calling on the angels, the archangels, the ascendant masters, source creator, Mother Sophia, soul guides and emissaries. What is this now moment message that the collective would benefit from hearing? Now moment message. Highest and best good. Is this for this reading for the collective? Is this for the reading for the collective? Is this for the reading for the collective? Is this for the reading for the collective? So I hope you all are having a, a wonderful Wednesday. I think today's Wednesday. It's August 14th. There's been a lot of energies, uh, a lot of things happening. Uh, we were guided last night um, to be on, awake and aware. And we were so tired. Um, that carried through today to urgent meetings and lots of messages coming through. So this reading is really not that much of a surprise for me, but let's see what we get. Spiritual service for the planet so when you see this card you see the planet in the bowl and there's two things that come to mind immediately one is that the planet earth it, whatever name you want to call it i refer to the planet now as hunamatea gaia was offered up as a sacrifice gaia was the lower timeline um, not by intention, but by others free will choices, we'll just say. Now Gaia self-sacrificed herself because that timeline was going to end in death anyway. Huna Matea is the soul of the new earth, fifth dimension earth that we are ascending to. The planet has ascended there. The frequency of the collective consciousness is also within 5D range. So now I look at this card and I see, yes, the spiritual service that all of the light workers, way showers, and star seeds that have embodied this calling is what is now providing our planet to the light, fully in service to the light. So we have been called into service. We volunteered to come here for this, to help the planet ascend. This is exactly what we've asked, been asked to do. And yes, it looks ugly sometimes, but you got to go through it, right? It's just like shadow work. You got to go through it to get to the rewards and the benefits of the other side where the light is. That's exactly what I feel like when I look at that in that card. And of course, there's archangel help. There's there's spiritual help. There's ascendant master's help. No, no one does any one thing in spiritual service alone. We always have assistance. Life path. Oh, what a beautiful card. 
So again, we did volunteer for this, whether we came in the soul and in an infant as being born and arrived here and grew up on this earth, or we had a divine soul walk in to the avatar that we're in. And that further ignited and activated our soul plan, plan and path. The other thing that comes to mind is it's also a part of many of our soul contracts to ascend to the fifth dimension and our 5D selves. Yes, we have our version of ourselves in the fifth dimension is seeding the planet. So most of us uh, divine feminines are having 5D births. Um, I am in the fifth dimension pregnant with quads right now. And I had triplets back in April. So uh, this is definitely what the new unity Christ consciousness, higher consciousness dimension and higher dimension of new earth is all about. That life path has always been in place. It's just now we're starting to realize it. We're starting to merge with that timeline. It's super exciting. Reassurance of the golden light. Are you having faith where you need some reassurance or do you have some questions in faith or do you have some doubts in your faith? This is coming up for a lot of people because they're looking around and they're wondering how can our God source creator allow this to happen or allow that to happen. And the truth of the matter is, is that a lot of the things that have happened for the planet is just like the shadow work that happens in your life. Okay. So events happen that are traumatic. They are a hurdle. They are a heartache. They, they make you doubt. They make you dig deep. And then you find the light and you find your true purpose and calling and you turn your pain into purpose right? This is exactly what we're talking about here. So when you need a reassurance, reassurance of the golden light, you just have to dig a little deeper and understand that every single thing that happens for you is so you have the opportunities to grow and evolve and choose a higher timeline. Is it easy to just dive into the depths of negativity? Yes. You could be pulled into any social media platform where they are full of judgment and shame and blame and guilt and bias. But is that higher consciousness and is that a higher timeline? It is not. So if that is still your daily practice, it is time for you to discern what is in the highest and best for you to give your energy to. Is it to give your energy to source creator and the higher timelines, which is unity, love, em empathy, kindness, compassion, or to stay in the lower timelines of guilt, shame, blame, trauma, and divisiveness. Today is the day you make a decision one way or the other, because that divergence is growing wider and wider every single day. Past life activation. Past life activation, this card in particular is coming up quite often and you see the bird here it's got an isis uh energy feel to it isis and osiris there's a lot of past life trauma but there's also a lot of past life gifts and abilities of course we didn't come into this life most of us with any memory of that it doesn't mean that it's not there so if this resonates with you, you likely have past life gifts and abilities and you're in the frequency now where those are called to be activated. Okay, now I'm going to go to Beyond Lemuria, move all negative energy from this deck. Calling on the angels, the archangels, our Lemurian ancestors, soul extensions, and soul emissaries. Source creator, Mother Sophia, what is it in this now moment that the message we carry out highest and best good for the collective from beyond Lemuria? What is the highest and best good message for the collective in this now moment?
Is this card for the collective? 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 Is this if this is your first time seeing one of my readings, I confirm the cards that I pull with my pendulum. My pendulum yeses are circles and noes are backwards and forwards. Radical expansion. Love it. In order for us as a soul being with our energy bodies to allow radical expansion, you have to accept the the realization that you have grow, growing to do. You have learning to do. You do not know it all. That might be a hard lesson for some. Radical expansion is another term for soul evolution, soul growth, shadow work. There is a, an infinite amount of power that we have as a birthright. But of course, we're not told that. We have to find our way back to that light and that knowledge and that wisdom. When you go through your shadow work, you're allowing the radical expansion of your true self, your oversoul, your your light body, your energy body, and the wisdom of all of your past incarnations to come through to serve your highest and best good. That is where the true wisdom is, allowing radical expansion. If you have an issue with change, you don't like change, you want to force things to stay the same when everything around you is changing, you're basically at this point saying that the earth did not need to ascend. Now, the earth ascending is on a 25,000 year cycle that happens in the planetary system. There's nothing that can be stopped or, or, or changed. It's going to happen. It's a matter of the when. That was always the, the crux of it. So it had been greatly slowed down by all the negative timelines and all the negative energy. And we came in and answered the call and elevated humanity's frequency to a higher dimension. And now that is sped up. Okay, so planets there wait on the people to catch up. If you have an issue with change or you have an issue with believing that there's more to life than what has been shown to you you have a lot of shadow work to do but the radical expansion is where that radical means it's uncontrollable and it's limitless and expansion is all good things right of course there's going to be a dragon on the card because it's the year of the dragon star seer Many of us are star seers. Many of us are star seeds with the abilities of clairvoyance. That's a star seer. You see beyond the veil and maybe you always have. That probably is getting much, much stronger now as the frequency rises and as people are being forced by the energies coming in to do more shadow work. You're working through some of the garbage that has been thrown upon us in this life. And really getting down to your true core self, strength, and abilities. If you are a clairvoyant, you really do yourself a service by keeping your energy clear, getting your energy clear, if that's not the case. Because the thing about abilities are, if you're not clear, then you can really be seeing a lot of dark stuff. And if you're only seeing dark things, you have a lot of clearing that needs to be done so that you can receive messages of the light. Star seers are very important. They really do have a good uh, sense of what's coming. Star seed elemental. Star seeds are sold beings that come down from any number of star systems and constellations. They volunteer to come here and bring their gifts and their abilities and their and their higher consciousness to help out. Elementals is another um, subgroup and they're mostly in the fey realm and we are extremely grateful for all that they bring because they really do bring a lot of power a lot of magic they are compact but very powerful and they connect us through the healing abilities of the elements and when i say that i mean earth water air fire ether love but also with earth 
right? And we we understand our our communion, our relationship with the earth much, much better when we are connected through the elements and the elementals help show us that. By, by the way, like 98% of the sold population are from the Fey realm. So don't, don't uh, feel like you're um, th the minority. You're really the majority. Freedom. Absolute freedom is what we're trying to attain here, right? The whole purpose of going through your soul path, going through your shadow work, going through the radical expansion is to obtain freedom. Truth sets you free. That is a true statement. It's what you do with the truth and whether you actually obtain the freedom. If you take that truth and you go, oh, that's not my truth. I don't, I don't subscribe to that. Everything is as I've been taught it in life. And I know nothing about what you're saying because it's not in that book. You're not going to ever have freedom. You're not going to ever have freedom because you're going to only live within the bindings of the book. Allow yourself to truly be free with the radical expansion. There is no limit. You drive it. You are your captain and co-pilot with the divine. So the ultimate goal is freedom, higher consciousness, unity, consciousness, compassion, empathy, and love, but all encompassed in a very, very free world that should definitely excite you in this now moment. Okay, angels and ancestors. Calling on the angels, the archangels, the ascendant masters, source creator, Mother Sophia. Spirit animals and guides, soul emissaries, soul extensions. What is the now moment highest and best good message for the collective? Is this card 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 for the collective? Okay, heart guardian, love and let yourself be loved. Showing you Magdalene and yes, love is the key. I started hearing love is the key last year. And to be honest, when I was, what I was going through at the time, energetically and with missions, uh, love was not the key in my mind frame, in my thought path, love was not the key. But that was before I realized that love truly is the strongest and most transformational power and energy space that any of us can ever occupy. If you are wondering how you will ever get over something, whether it be a, a personal situation or professional situation, or even what's happening in our world, I want you to call in Maggie and ask for your love guardian to show you clarity and the way love truly is the most powerful force out there. We use love, forgiveness, and gratitude, LFG. And that is our tried and true way of getting through shadow work and overcoming obstacles that have stumped us our entire earthly existence, this incarnation and many others. So love is the key. If you're wondering what to do next, Go to the place of your heart, your heart space, and love. Love will show you the way. I've got five decks, so I've got to really conserve my space here. Okay. Magic guardian. Unlock the magic within. Good and bad in all things. Good and bad in all things. I want you to please go back to your heart space and understand that there is 
benevolent, good, magical things that we can do all day, every day that is helpful for the collective. We are doing that to combat the dark energy that has been thrown upon our entire culture for decades. So if you're worried more about, you know, the kitchen witches down the street, putting a spell on your cat or something, you really need to broaden your horizons and do some shadow work. Most of the collective is now seeing how the energy of good and the energy of bad really do clash all the time and light wins, love wins. Why weren't we winning before? Well, because you had a lot of people lose their faith and lose their way. And we have really, really worked very hard to instill truth. And that guidance comes in with our our intentions and the energies have been working in our in our favor. The Pleiadian High Council, the Galactic Federation, the Arcturian Council, Source Creator, the Archangels, the Ascendant Masters, your own guardian angels. We've all worked together to bring us to the point where we see magic as a benevolent gift and ability and it is nothing that we're going to shy away away from if there's a dark magic that comes our way we head it head on with source light and we win it is simple because we also remember that love is the key it's not always about force as much as it is finding the key to unlock the riddle Guardian angel, I just mentioned that you are not alone. If you feel like you are the only person in your circle, in your family, in your friend group, in your community, in your city, in your workplace, that is seeing what's going on, I completely empathize with you. That's exactly how I felt, but you're not alone. What you do need to uh, readjust is your circle. So looking at the people that you surround yourself with and you share your energy with and really, truly being honest, do I feel completely drained after I've been around so-and-so or after I've gone to this place? If you do, it's because they're energy vampires and they only want to suck your light out of you. So stop going there and stop talking to them and stop answering te text messages from them. People tend to be very cautious in what they do in certain areas, but they're less cautious in what they do with their own energy. So you think you can block somebody um, from calling you, but you can still exchange emails and that's not an energy exchange. It's definitely an energy exchange. If you have people in your life sucking the life out of you, making you feel completely drained and dumping all their shit in your lap and then making you feel even more alone because they, after they emptied their dump load, their dump in your lap, they go off and have a happy life and you're stuck there trying to deal with all this stuff they left you. So you got some changes to make and it's within your power to do that. Ask your guardian angel for help. If you don't know who your guardian angel is, look it up. It's usually by your birth date. And I have a video about all that too. And then you can finally start to get some peace in your life because you can make better decisions. Which be the light. So there's a big, uh, a big magical push here of light witches, good witches, be the light. And, and alchemists, we're alchemists. We change and transform dark to light, bad to good, unhealthy to healthy, clogged to unclogged, <laughs> blocked to open. It is nothing to be afraid of. You just face it head on. When the room is super, super dark and it gets a little intense and you're starting to have some fear, what makes that go away? Turning the light on. Light. All you have to have is light. Source light. And everything, the light of truth will be shown to you and you will find your way. Be the light. If you think that you are the only one that is, again, like the only one in your whole circle that is receiving the light, that is getting messages, you have an intuitive push and everyone around you is super negative and you're trying to say that the cup is really half full, find a new crowd. It's okay to be introspective and isolate for a while because the people that were around you were around you for the wrong reasons. That's totally okay too.
Now we're going to go to Keepers of the Light. Remove all negative energy from this deck. Calling on the angels, the archangels, the ascendant masters, source creator, Mother Sophia, soul guides and emissaries and extensions. What is the now moment message the collective needs to receive in their highest and best good? St. Germain. Karma releasing. Move beyond the drama. Create your own path. Make room for good energy. Well, if this doesn't just sum up the whole reading. So in order to change your circumstance, okay, if you're someone who's like, bad things always happen to me and narcissistic people always find me and I can never catch a break, then what you need to do is balance your karma. Okay, and change your thought process. So get away from the drama. When you pivot away from chaos, you have the option to then not enter energy exchange with chaotic people. Whenever you do that, then you can clear some karma, balance some karma out and start to attract what your heart and thoughts are. Wherever your thoughts are, that's what you're going to manifest. Okay, so if you're always thinking about the drama, the chaos, the pain, the unfairness, the bias, the, all the negative things, that's what you're going to draw more into your into your vortex. So you want to really, truly balance the karma, let go of the drama. It is not for you. It does nothing for you. Okay, all these dramatic things, events and people and places. If you're listening to me, you're beyond that and you're better than that. Keep growing and don't be stagnant in the lower vibrations. St. Germain's violet flame is used to transmute and transform all sorts of things, bad habits, health issues, um, curses, hexes, and spells, all sorts of things. He's like the master alchemist. That violet flame is super powerful. If you have no idea where to begin, cue up a St. Germain violet flame meditation. And if nothing else, just listen to it magic will start to occur in your life that is transformative and will start to free you from all the drama. Create your own path. Create your own path. I'm pretty sure, yep, we had a life path card already. And I love it when I get confirmation from two different decks about our a, a message, right? So your path was decided by you long before you arrived on the planet, long before you were a cute little baby. Your soul contract was decided already. So clear your path of all the things that are actually put in the way to keep you from completing that. Okay. That's exactly why they're there. They're there for you to make a higher consciousness decision and show that you're growing, show that you're allowing the radical expansion to occur in your life that is able to clear out the path. Make room for good energy. That's what I just said. Make room for good energy. If you feel like the dove in the darkness, that you're the only bit of light that's there, you are being called to be the good witch and find the good magic and use it and transform your way out of that situation. Love St. Germain. That's my, my soul grandfather. Serapis Bay, Ascension. Move into your true self and rise above the darkness. The light is here. Okay, the planet did it. She did it. Huna Matea ascended. But what do we have to do? She's waiting on the people. Okay. Ascension is happening. It's in process. It's part of what we are doing right now. In order to fully embody ascension, that means you got to do your shadow work. You got to do your things. So as we are going through doing the work of the ascension you have to find your truer self your true self that means you have to clear up your circle 
That means you have to realize the people around you that are va energy vampires, that are NPCs, that are organic portals, the humans that traded their soul, because every single one of them are around you for your light. And those beings are karmic. They're there to give you obstacles and opportunities to grow so that you move on away from them and find your path, your path lit up of source light. The other part of this message is rise above the darkness. The best way to rise above the darkness is to turn the dang TV off. Stop interacting with those that just want to rehash the past. They don't want to talk about healing because they just are stuck in it. They don't want to move forward. Okay, if you yourself are always rehashing the past and you can't let go of things, that's the shadow work you need to do to change your energy, to change what you attract in your life. The darkness is going to keep coming because that's what's in your thoughts. Okay, what occupies space in your mind is what you manifest. So if you don't want that stuff to keep happening, then you have to be the change that stops that stuff from entering your brain. So when the thoughts come up, cancel, cancel. Nope, I'm not going there. I'm going to go outside and talk to the birds. Believe me, it makes much more sense to do that. The light is here. You just have to allow yourself to see it. That is a huge part of a lot of people's journey is that they, they have a lack of faith right? They talk about their faith, but they want their faith to be like this crystal. They want it to be something they can hold in their hand. And it's not, okay? It's not. Yes, there are tangible things that come from our golden source light. But the things that really truly are transformative are energetic and can't be seen, but can be felt. And that is just as real as anything else. Kali Ma, facing fear. Major spiritual changes are unfolding and this is your chance to soar. Absolutely. Kali Ma is a goddess of destruction, but also love. What she fought was people not believing her word and not believing she was worthy. And she definitely made them understand she was worthy and she was powerful. The thing is, is that the huge amount of disservice that has been done to the collective, because you feel like, you may feel like, the only truth comes from the bindings of a book that was formed out of satanic rituals. And I truly mean that from the depths of my soul. The truth does not live in the Bible, okay? It's 90% edits, that's man-made edits, and it's not because it's translated, okay? Translation doesn't add words and paragraphs and take books away. Those are edits. It took the truth out because the truth was to be self-fulfilled and self-powered because the truth lies within us. That we are connected to source light from the time that we arrive here. We're connected before we arrive here. And we're connected after we leave here. We are never apart. Ever. It doesn't matter that you don't go to a, a church. Or that you don't read that book. And that you don't confess your sins to the man behind the cloth. No. That is man made. To take your power away. And make you feel guilt and shame and blame. And not worthy enough if the whole collective was told the truth from the get-go we would have never been in that really super dark place but that was how we all came to find the light again the truth is there and sets you free it's a matter of what you really want to take in and allow if you want things to change you have to be willing to change and when you are ready to take that step in faith you will soar on your ascension because you are quickly rewarded for your sovereignty and you are quickly rewarded for taking your power back. We don't get rewarded for letting people walk all over us like a doormat. Hope, love, and acceptance. Love is yours. Recognize your divine worth and choose loving thoughts. Exactly. Love is the key because the one thing that our culture teaches us to do is not love one another. And not love ourselves. Okay. 
they throw the word around like um, it's confetti and it's not. Love is powerful and true love and compassion and empathy and kindness, it all goes together. If you are full of vitriol and you are full of judgment and you are full of all the low vibratory things that we talk about of shame, blame, guilt, fear, frustration, pride, that is not love. That is the opposite of love. So to truly make a change in your life, the first step is loving yourself and forgiving yourself and being grateful for the abilities and the gifts that you bring to the world, whether they recognize it or not. When you really do truly love yourself, so much falls away from you that has made you feel disempowered. And you start to take your power back and your soul fractals that you've given away start to find their way back to you and you become more whole and your light gets brighter and you get motivated because your connection is true to source creator. And it is not about a building or a book or a man. Love is yours if you choose to give it to yourself and then you can truly give it to others, right? Because can you actually give love when you don't give it to yourself, if you don't really have true, authentic love for yourself, what are you giving anyway? You have to have it to give it. Recognize your divine worth. The whole collective is been told that you're unworthy, you're not good enough, and that people have to come down to you to meet you where you are. No, nope, that's not true. The answer is you rise above right? Rise above the darkness. Rise means ascend. Ascend is rise. Rise above the darkness so that you can find your true light and that true light will light your way. I tell people all the time, it's as complicated or easy as you want to make it. It's up to you. Last deck, the energy oracle. Remove all negative energy from this deck. And I don't, I don't mean to say that ascension and shadow work and doing these steps are easy, but is it truly easier to be in a world where you're controlled and you don't have freedom? I don't think so. No. Matter of fact, no. The answer is no. Calling in the angels, the archangels, the ascendant masters, source creator, Mother Sophia. In this now moment, what is the highest and best message for the collective? Okay, I think I have enough room here. Magician in the mirror. This has got some Merlin energy there, but it also shows you um, fire and ice, right? It's like the duality of life. And when you look in the mirror, what do you see? You see your reflection, right? And does the mirror show you truth? Does the mirror show you what you want to see? Because those are typically not the same thing. It's also a, a trigger card, right? So if you're triggered by people in your presence, people that you look upon, they say things and do things that trigger you. All those triggers are places that you have weaknesses in your own spirit that you have to do the shadow work on. It's not about the other person. It's about you. If I say something here today or any other video time that triggers you, put a pin in it because that's where you have shadow work to do. And you're welcome. Because yes, it helps fill in the gaps. It helps you give you a place to start. When you start doing true shadow work and digging down to the, the depths of the source of these triggers, that's when you really start to heal. That is when you really start to heal and you start to free yourself from the matrix. The magician in the mirror is literally showing you how to transform your life.
<clears throat> man holding a heart. Now, the divine feminine is risen, rising. I like to say risen because I really feel like we have. And the divine masculine has gotten a bad rap. The divine masculine was distorted and overinflated in the ego, which does not serve anyone well. Okay. And so the men in your life need re-education. Okay. Just like the women in life needed to relearn what it was like to be a divine feminine. Okay. There's a lot that comes with that title. The divine masculines in your life, the, the men that hold your heart, the men that hold your heart strings, are they of the light? Do they have a soul? Are they supposed to be in your life? Are they there to keep you company, but they really only bring you turmoil and trauma and pain? This is where you have to do more shadow work. There's a whole lot of people that have karmic relationships. Karmic means not divine, not for your highest and best good, not meant to be around longer than the lesson that they brought into your life. Okay, karmic relationships bring an opportunity to your life to learn a lesson and evolve and allow for this radical expansion to take place. But once it does, you got to kick them to the curb. There's a lot of people that would rather have somebody in their life that brings them trauma, turmoil, and pain because then they don't have to be alone. But when you're alone, that's when you realize your gifts. When you're alone, that's when you understand your life path, okay? That's when you understand you're here for a bigger purpose and your abilities come online because you don't have all this distortion and negative energy pulling your power away and keeping you from hearing your messages and feeling your intuitive pushes back toward your soul path back aligning you to source creator now there could be men holding the heart that are good for you i'm not getting this message strongly in this collective reading i'm getting that in the collective there's a vast amount of men who control women and children because they hold their heart, but they're karmic. Okay. That means they're not meant to be in their life forever. They're not meant to be in their life at all right now because that lesson was over with a long time ago. So they got to be let go. And no, it is not better to be in a toxic relationship than it is to be alone because you're never truly alone, right? You have a ton of people with you namely guardian angels archangels and ascendant masters now we got the woman holding the heart so definitely definitely have to have some come to jesus moments here and i say that you know laughingly so do we think that women are manipulative just like men absolutely are there women in in our culture that manipulate and control and cause chaos and trauma and heartache just by holding on to people's hearts absolutely but these coming together is telling me that the karmic relationships and ties to those that are holding you back are ending the man and the woman that holds the hearts in a malevolent and manipulative way are losing their hold on you because the collective consciousness is risen and you are tapping into your true self and you're going to let them go. And there's a lot of them. 50% of our entire population in the world are NPCs. They don't even have a soul. They cannot be with a soul being for any length of time. It will not work. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is know who you're dealing with. That comes back to this. When you feel like you're the only light being surrounded by a bunch of darkness, you have to know who you're dealing with. You got to do that a spiritual accountability. Okay. This is whatever you get clear. And then you can ask your higher self, does this person have a soul? Does this person have a soul? Are they of the light? Are they in alignment to source creator? You absolutely have the right to ask these questions of the people that are in your circle and sucking your energy out of you. Don't li listen to anybody tell you, you don't have the right to ask those questions because you do. And whenever you do that, you take your power back. And when you take your power back, they no longer hold the heartstrings. They can no longer manipulate you. And that is what's been happening over and over and over again in our culture is that 
through false sense of security and false sense of love, couples are so toxic with one another. And it's because of that. They're living in the drama. And what have we seen? Get away from the drama, turn away from the drama, go to the light, find your true self. This is actually what has to happen in your home, in your heart, in your soul. This is the work that needs to be done. Oh, yes, of course, because we're going to have the man holding the coin. Now, in my world, the man holding the coin is like big brother, right? The government, uh, the people that make the the policies and the laws and the regulations that just end up costing you more money, but your quality of life doesn't improve any. So this whole line is get right with the people in life that take your energy that you willingly give your energy to now i'm not telling you to go out there and be an anarchist i'm not saying that i'm saying decide for yourself who is worthy of your energy who is worthy of your love who is worthy of your time and your money because this is saying first of all look in the mirror and deal with your own inadequacies your own doubts your own weaknesses what needs to be healed in you and when you get to the point where you've healed and you understand your soul path and plan then all of these other situations are going to become so clear for you that you can cut through the mud and the muck so precisely i feel like this is government this is like big brother and they are pulling, they have been manipulating us and pulling the strings. But the more we move away from that and the more we're disgusted in what they've done in our lives, it does divide us because you have some of those that have been living off of those government handouts and it causes them to have a false sense of power over you. Just like the men in our life that sometimes have a false sense of power in our life because they're pulling the heartstrings, they're manipulating you, they're, they're making you make decisions for the wrong reasons, out of guilt, shame, blame, fear, frustration, not a whole lot different from the government, okay? And all of these are feeding on your weaknesses and they're feeding on your doubts and your fears and they're feeding on the shit that you will clear up as soon as you face yourself in the mirror and do your shadow work. Because as soon as you heal completely from that, nobody else can manipulate you. All of these go away when you do your shadow work. Hope, love, and acceptance. Love is the key. Accepting change is also very important. In order for you to radically expand and have your soul evolution and go through your dark night of the soul, you got to understand that there's some changes that are going to take place, but accepting it and, and asking for it, recognizing your divine worth and choosing your thoughts and path from a heart space, from a love space is going to give you the strength to face your fear. It's going to give you the strength to go toe to toe with these religion versus spirituality okay religion is man-made spirituality is from spirit it's true it's unadulterated it's not mani manipulative and it is loving compassionate empathetic and kind and if it's if you have those people in your life they're telling you anything different Kali Ma can show you how to take care of that Serapis Bay Ascension, move into your true self, rise above the darkness. The light is love. Exactly. What did we start with? Love. You are the light. You are the dove in the darkness. Continue rising above the fray. If there's stuff you don't know how to get rid of, call in St. Germain and the Violet Flame to transmute it to love and light. Take your power back. Take your energy back. Start clearing out your energy body so that you have the intuition, your gifts, you access your spirit team, they can access you and things become a lot less chaotic in your world in that way. Be the light, be the light. There's so much darkness around us that we want to spread our light. The more you do the work of your shadow work and clear out the shadows, the brighter your light gets and you spread that with your with your community if you feel like you're the only 
one, the dove and the darkness, start to do an inventory of who you've let in your circle and start to kick them out. Because unlocking your divine gifts, the magic within is going to show you truth like you've never seen it before. You're going to start to detect those people in your life that are not supposed to be there, that are karmic, and you're going to get rid of them. And you're going to do it lovingly. You're not going to do it vindictively. You're just going to say, I've outgrown this relationship. It no longer serves my highest and best good. And I wish you the best in all your endeavors while you pack your shit and go. I say that lovingly with a smile on my face, but you know what I mean? The goal, the name of the game is freedom. We as a people, as a collective have had so much of our freedoms taken away from us from, you guessed it, government and from the manipulative ones in our lives that said we had to do this and we had to do that. And if we didn't do this and we didn't do that, we wouldn't be free. But in actuality, they took our freedoms away, right? So get back to basics. What are basics? Well, the elements of life are basics, but they're also super powerful. And when you bring them together, transformative changes occur. Connect with earth, get in the water, put your feet in the mud, talk to the birds, be with the trees, allow the sun to hit your face, get back to basics. You have born gifts, birthright gifts. Some of them are clairvoyants that see things. Some are clairaudience. Some are clairsentience. They feel it in their body. Some are claircognizance. They just know stuff. They just know it. Embrace these gifts, okay? Because it's what sets you apart. And it allows for this limitless, radical expansion of your soul and your energy. And the transformative power of your light has no boundaries. And what we can accomplish is things that we've accomplished in our past lives. We just have forgotten them. You got to make your way back to your gifts. You got to make your way back to the wisdom of your energy body, your higher self, the accumulation of all your lives. Were they all good? No, they were not. They were what you needed them to be to allow for your own radical expansion so that you can come to this now moment and realize which is the path for me. Is it a higher timeline? Unity, consciousness, love, compassion, empathy? Or is it a lower timeline full of guilt, shame, blame, fear, pain? You choose. We have the power of free will choice. That's exactly what got us in this predicament to begin with. If you're having doubts about your faith, I want you to dig deep. I want you to realize that faith is not something that you see and hold as much as it is that you feel. And I always say it takes a little bit of courage and a whole lot of faith to be on this journey. And that's very true. But your journey was set for you with you. Okay. Nothing has happened to you. It's happened for you. Every single obstacle, every moment of trauma, every pain, every hurdle is for you to become your true self. Selecting the higher timeline, the higher consciousness choice, and allowing yourself to grow. Because at the end of the day, we all volunteered for this spiritual service to help the planet and the people ascend. I hope you've enjoyed this reading. If you would like a reading with me, please send me an email, healingdisclosuresyt at gmail.com. And I'll look forward to seeing you again next time. Hydrate ground, meditate, and rest. These energies are no joke. Love you all.